Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla. Now, uh, this is an interesting video because recently I was accused of something called the same face syndrome. Uh, this is a drawing syndrome, and I'm sure a lot of people have been accused of this. Now, I can honestly say that, yeah, I do have it. So this video is going to be talking to you about how five ways on how I'm going to beat it and hopefully you, if you think you have the same face syndrome with your drawing, original characters, and everything, maybe you can take my advice on how I'm going to beat my same face syndrome and, you know, apply it to your own art. It's totally up to you. You might not have it. I know a lot of artists have it. I've seen a lot on social media of the same really famous Instagram artists that have this same face thing going on. And I've noticed it a ton. And, you know, I love their art so much, I don't say nothing. I don't really care because I love their art. And it doesn't really bother me because, I mean, yeah, anybody can look like this, but it's fine. It doesn't really bother me. Everybody's style is different. So if you think, if you get accused of it, the thing is, it's your own style. So it's totally up to you. Now, I only watched one other artist youtuber and i took her advice to heart i i'm gonna butcher her name <laughs> rem butin illustration yeah she did the same face syndrome she talked about different expressions like instead of just drawing the content smiling happy face she encouraged to do the five different expressions it was really really helpful for me and i didn't want to like watch too many other same face syndrome videos because i didn't want to copy anybody else's ideas the number one thing that encouraged me the most that i need to do more is draw from life that's number one that i think i'm going to start how to beat this because yes everybody you know i draw a lot of cartoon characters but i don't really draw a lot of people from life and you know right here i'm drawing the one and only walt disney and something that really does scare me is drawing older people because if you look at any of my art on social media or anything before I don't really draw a lot of old people, so that's why I picked an older picture of Disney, like towards the end of his life and around the Florida project. That's why I picked this one, and I don't know, somebody's gonna correct me saying that this was not the Florida, the Florida project, what is wrong with you? I don't care, he's old. So <laughs> that's why I picked him to do this example on. So you're gonna see a lot of my drawing examples are drawing from life, and they're just, you know, I want to focus on more of their actual facial features especially the lines oh my goodness i can't tell you how important lines are when it comes to facial expressions because if somebody's crying if their faces are scrunched up you gotta recognize those lines so that's a huge thing for me i have to draw those lines and the perfect way to do it is of course walt disney with all of his smile lines his wrinkle lines lines of knowledge and beauty and hope for years and years to come <laughs> Number two on how to beat this is draw characters that inspire you, including the real life characters for movies and TV shows. I cannot, I cannot stress, especially towards me, I need to draw more from life. One of my favorite artists on social media is the animated life and she does so many different people characters from movies and tv shows if you look at her stuff you just get so inspired by drawing characters that are from tv shows or movies for example judy garland and as you can see judy garland in this sketch you'll see at the beginning of this and towards the end that she looks too much like she's in my style still and i get angry towards the end of this video and i go back and i fix her face to look more like her as opposed to my style because it just starts to show this face on Judy Garland that you see now is the face that I usually draw on most of my female characters when I'm drawing in my own style when it comes to like the Disney princesses or just uh, female characters in general you start to see the same techniques and lo and behold I already started off this project with drawing in the same exact style so you see where I start and then towards the middle of this part, you see me go in and I change her expression more and more to not look like my typical female characters that I usually draw. And so I go back and I fix that. And one thing that I'd like to point out, the reason probably why 
I draw in such the same face style is because I started off as an anime artist before I decided to switch into the Disney style art kind of feel to it. Um, and I think the reason why I draw so many faces in the same way is because sometimes a lot of female in, uh, anime characters or manga characters look relatively the same. I mean, I could be totally wrong, but sometimes I know I read from one artist, writer from this Shoujo Beat uh, series, and all the main characters, even though they were different stories, they all looked the same. And I think that's where I picked it up, that... Yeah, they look the same. <laughs> um, so I think just by creating all these female characters that were my main characters or Disney princesses, for example, when I draw the Disney princesses, yeah, they start to have the same face kind of features. So yeah, I can see that being accused of my artwork. I mean, it was really, really strong two or three years ago when I was drawing a lot of female characters and then I realized, oh my gosh, yeah, they do look the same, so how can I fix this? So I fixed it two years ago, three years ago, and now I'm back to fixing it again. <laughs> An artist's work is never done for improving in your art career, that is for sure. Another huge thing is what I took from the other artist YouTuber that did a video on expressions and just the same face syndrome. She said to practice different expressions. Now this is definitely something I don't do. I don't do it. I usually just draw happy people. I draw happy, smiling people, or there's no expression at all. I don't draw sad, angry, confused, or, you know, I don't really, I don't draw outside the happy emotion. Until this was pointed out to me, I really didn't consider that put to, to heart. I didn't think, hey, you're drawing a lot of happy people. Where are the other emotions? And I, oh, it, it, I feel like a hypocrite because I always like push my students in my cartoon art classes hey you're not drawing enough emotions you need to draw emotions and I'm just like well geez now I'm calling the kettle black Blah. another big tip how I'm going to beat this is to push myself you know I used to have an art teacher that would stand over my shoulder in high school and she would just be like keep going keep going keep going and I do the exact same thing to my students now that I'm an art teacher it was good advice, just keep pushing yourself. I would think I was done, and then I would just like, wait, but I could add more. And that's the fact, you know, as artists, we think, oh, I'm done. Well, you probably are not. And I usually say that to a lot of my, especially my younger artists that I know have a lot of potential. I just go, you're not done, keep going. And I have to take that advice to heart as well. I, I need to keep going, push yourself, keep going, add shading here and here, add these facial lines. And I mean, on Michael Scott, oh my goodness, I definitely push the limits. So you can see that I'm pushing myself a little bit more with shading wise. I saw that I had a lighter call erase pencil that I could go in and shade their skin tone a little bit more. And that way it would pop against the darker uh, color of purple pencil that I had in my call erase package. Another way to beat the whole same face syndrome is to attack your weaknesses. So emotions are my weaknesses. I don't do that many emotions outside of the happy content kind of look. So I need to attack the emotions and I need to try different art styles. So I used to be anime artist and now I'm a Disney artist style. So I need to try more simplistic kind of things. I mean, even looking at this picture, how simplistic it is, I still have an emotion, but you're able to still tell that it's Hermione. So just trying different art styles. Another quick point is to draw the people that you love. I mean, this isn't number six, it's just an add-on. Draw the people that you love. Draw your friends and family, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Draw who you love. Everybody has these special qualities. So if they're tall and lanky, draw them tall and lanky. Don't add muscles to them. Draw what they look like. If they're short and fluffy, then draw them short and fluffy. Don't make them lose 20 pounds within a day of your sketch. Draw what you see and draw the people you love because they're all different. Remember I said that I went back and I had to redraw Judy's face because it was looking too much like in my style? So here we go. This is me actually looking more at her picture and going outside of my style. And you see how much more she actually improves, how it, it accents more of her actual look instead of my style and you know, 
Ah, I hate drawing on this paper, but it's my sketchbook. I gotta finish it. <laughs> so yeah, you see how much I just push myself and it looks better. That's what you have to do. You just have to push yourself and it usually turns out to be for the best.